Yo, what's up guys? My name is AFC Odeon and welcome to a new video guys. I know it has been a while, uh, but as, as some of you have read um, in my one of my recent posts is that a few days ago I received my second injection of vaccination and yeah, the day after my second injection I got a fever. Because of that fever I wasn't able to upload anything because I was really fearing horrible guys it's getting better now um, I'm also preparing the new team for the road to top 100 season 5 but yeah to save me some time guys with the uploads um, I'm going to spectate a few of the recent OU tournament games I'm gonna start watching the semi to semi-final games and then the final game so probably in this I'll, I'll do it in three separate videos. So for this video, it's gonna be one of the semi-final battles, and in the next video, it's gonna be one of the other semi of, of the other semi-final battle. And then the video afterwards is gonna be the final battle. So yeah, I hope you guys are excited for that one. Um, usually, you go to tournaments and to tournament history, and there's usually an OU tournament somewhere. And here is actually two. Community commit OU. I don't, don't know what that means. But we'll just go to the most. I think the top one is the most recent one, right? Yeah, 14. Three days ago. So I I haven't watched these games, so I'm just gonna, it's gonna be the first time. Uh, so yeah. Aaron versus Daniel. You know, we're gonna watch Aaron versus Daniel Dios. So I'm just gonna click this, and yeah, I'm just gonna spectate, guys. Okay, so left side, right side. Right side has Darmanitan, Garchomp, and Gar Scizor. Hides Dragon hiding behind the back and Skarmory. Left side we have a Lucario, which is actually going to be interesting. Um, Gengar kind of stops Lucario. But yeah, if I look at both teams, I think Scizor can actually be really scary. Because Darman right side has Darmanitan and Skarmory. But... If those two get weakened, then Scizor can actually be really scary. But for I said as well, uh, if the team with the Darmanitan has Source and Scizor, I can can be really scary. Um, Choice Band isn't that bad though, because Gliscor is there. But Sparathorn. Uh, Garchomp versus Darman. Hold up, hold up. Okay, so to make sense of this situation, guys, I think this Garchomp is Choice Scarf. It's the only reason Darmanitan would stay in is if Darmanitan's choice card, he was most likely U-turning there. Um, but Garchomp, Earthquake first. So I think Garchomp is actually choice card. And Daniel knows this. This is why he went into High Dragon on a Garchomp. So let's see if he goes for Flamethrower. I think Dark Pulse would actually be a better play if you're not choiced. Maybe, maybe he was Specs or something. Because I know he, he was actually live. I know he has two steel types, but Dark Pulse hits everything. And if Lucario or Scissor coming or Ferrothorn, even you can just switch to Flamethrower. But just for Ice Beam, a Dragon stays. I think a Dragon stays in because uh, Daniel doesn't have a good switch for the Starmie. Look at the Starmie versus his team. No switch in. So I can understand him staying in, getting some damage off. At least he's Starmie's in Scissor range now. I think Hydreigon is gonna be sacked here. You wanna keep Skarmory around for Scizor. Uh, you wanna keep Gengar around. For the Gliscor. Obviously, you might go into Scizor here, but I feel like you just keep Scizor. Because if this is Source, then Scizor is actually a big threat for Aaron. Does end up staying in Starmie, go just going for the Scald, which is really safe because it hits everything for neutral damage and can burn something. But yeah, he kind of has to bring in his Scissor right now. And if he's <laughs> a big boy play would be Source Dancing here, but I think Bullet Punching here is a bit safer in case Starmie is running Hidden Power Fire. Because Scissor is going to be his way of winning. Because Gliscor could take this on, but if this is Source Tan Scizor and Gliscor is not running Taunt or Firefang, then Scizor can actually obliterate him. 
Okay, that's bullet point. She's life orb. Okay. I guess Glyph score is the one coming in right now. Yeah. Glyph score. So that makes the most sense to me. He switches into Skarmory. And he goes straight for acrobatics. Standable, because Scissor is a threat. But now that this we see this Glyph score being acrobatics, so much sense as well. He doesn't have Ruse, so if I was Skarmory, I would just break with the guy. That rocks. I guess Stealth Rock here is fine. Uh, I guess Glasgow is not, most likely not roosting. Probetics, how much is this gonna do? Okay. Here's the Bread Bird. Okay, Stealth Rocking first makes actually more sense. Let's get up Stealth Rock now. Now Gengar comes in, and this should be enough for Gengar to knock Gliscor out. Um, it, because it's this set, I don't think you s it goes into Ferret. The reason I don't like the Ferret on Switch is Gengar could be going for Sub, can be going for Nasty Blob. It does go for Shadow Ball, so it ends up working out. Life Orb. Gengar, okay. He misses Focus Blast, though. I think that matters, because if it... I think that actually matters. I think... Ferrothorn would have died to Focus Blast, so it's unfortunate he missed, but now Scissor comes. And this is actually a free Sword Stance, uh, assuming you're a Sword because I saw Life Orb. Yeah, and honestly I would just Sword Stance again here. If you don't die to Acrobatic, you don't die to Earthquake. And at plus 4 you can actually still win. Well... I would attack as Glide as Gli Wait, why did he Why did he switch? This switch makes no sense because Baritorn doesn't do anything to Scissor. Scissor can just Sword Stance again. He just gave him a free Sword Stance. The reason he needed to Earthquake or something is because it, he needs to put him in range of, of Vacuum Wave for. Maybe Bandit Scissor. Yeah, that's what I mean. If the Acrobatics first, that would have made more sense. Scissor is at half HP. Scissor can actually win this game, guys. He must. He should have never switched out his his Gliscor and give him the free Sword Stance. I guess Lucario is the one that comes in here because I don't know if Lucario is gonna live a plus two life or Bullet Punch though. But if Scissor is going to roost on a Vacuum Wave, he's actually going to be a bit more healthy. To the point where he might live Vacuum Wave into Bullet Punch from Scissor. And then it can actually become really scary. Lucario is the one coming in. But Lucario either needs to Vacuum Wave or he needs to um, Aura Sphere. what he does. If Scissor actually roosts the Vacuum Wave, like I said, because it'll be really good, but if he Bullet Punches on Arasur, it would be even better, because he would be outside of Bullet Punch range from this Scissor. Like, this Scissor can, le can still win the game. Why? Oh my god. Why? Dude, okay guys, let me explain. This is like this is this is the worst play you can make. Cuz right now, even if Scissor went for bullet punch there, he gets a free roost off, but now he gets a free sword stance. And with full HP, this Ferrothorn doesn't get to do anything. Even if he has Thunder Wave, I would still risk it as being the Scissor. Cuz you need that plus four plus six. With that plus six, you guarantee knock out this Lucario. With that plus six, if this if that scissor is offensive, you might knock out the scissor with bullet punch off the stealth rock as well. Wait, bulldoze. It's the very bulldoze. Wait, what? Oh my god. Daniel! 
Why not take this opportunity? Oh my god. <laughs> okay. You yeah, because the burial is kind of clutched though, because with that bulldozed, his scissor is actually going to be slower than this scissor. So if I was the scissor, I would sword stance here. Yeah. Exactly. You sword stance, that bulldoze slowed his scissor. If that guy just went for the sword stance, if Daniel went for the sword stance, I think he wins. He would have won. But now, scissor should outspeed him and that bullet's... Bullet punch should be enough to knock out this scissor. Now all that's left is guard jump, but remember, uh, Aaron's guard jump was choice guard. You also have as Lucario at Pokemon Wave in the back. So all this scissor needs to do is bullet punch this guard jump. And he goes for Earthquake. Now Garchomp comes in and just knocks out this Garchomp. You know, this Garchomp is choice guard. Well, I, I pretty much assume it. Wait. That Garchomp is choice guard as well. <laughs> okay. That Garchomp was choice guard as well. That's cool. So to sum up, summarize up this game, guys. Um, it's unfortunate that I'm not able to skip and go to previous turns. Uh, while spectating because I could have explained a lot of things but um, Aaron, I think Aaron was left side, Daniel was right side Aaron gave so many opportunities to like you guys should know uh, Ferrothor does not beat Swords Dance Scissor it's not worth guys uh, trying to take uh, Iron Barb, give Iron Barb's damage to the Scissor, because if that Scissor is Sword Stance, he's gonna freely set up. Uh, the worst case scenario for Scissor would be if Ferrothorn was Thunder Wave. But even, even with a Thunder Wave, Bullet Point still goes first most times, unless the other one has Bullet Point or another priority attack as well. Because at the position of Daniel, he was behind. And his only way of winning was getting to plus four or plus six. And yeah, the first mistake uh, Aaron made against the Scissor was not attacking him with Gliscor, switching into Ferrothorn, giving the Scissor a free sword stance, and then go back into Gliscor <laughs> just to let it die. Because uh, we saw how much acrobatics it If he just acrobatic him first, and he was live port as well. He would have taken acrobatic damage, which was about 60%, and he would have taken another 10% from the Life Orb recoil. And from there, uh, Life Orb Lucario with Vacuum Wave could do a lot. But the most important thing is that Scissor wouldn't get to plus 4. Because at plus 2, it's still easy to handle. Lucario won't die too. But let me actually cock this, guys. Uh, if plus 4. Life Warp Scissor would, would have knocked out Lucario. A Life Warp plus 4. Level 50. Yeah, plus 4 Life Warp. Adamant Technician. Scissor would have knocked out Lucario. So that one was even more stupid of Aaron uh, to let the scissor set up like that. He should have just stayed in with Gliscor, attacked him, and at plus two, he was fine. Lucario would still be able to knock him out with Aurosphere. Garchomp cannot really come in because Garchomp would take an Aurosphere to the face. So, but yeah, just bringing in your Ferrothorn against the scissor, it's just. It is not smart, guys, because Scissor gets. I, I, if you watch my games as well, when I use Source and Scissor, whenever my opponent uses Ferrothorn, I just set up Source dances, and most of the times I have U turn. Then even with the plus four U turn, uh, the Ferrothorn still gonna take a lot of damage. But that guy was Life Orb, so it was even more scary. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, guys, make sure to hit that like button. For the next video, we'll watch the other semi-final game. Um, so hit the like button, subscribe if you'd like to see more Pokemon PvP content. 
leave a comment down below if you have any questions guys join our discord server if you'd like to chat it up um and yeah i hope to see you guys in the next video peace out